Hey everybody, I want to talk to you briefly about the truth about System D. So for those who are Linux newbies, System D is an init system for Linux, and it also controls a lot of uh, different daemons on your device, like the network manager, SSH, through a program that you can access them called SystemCTL, and there are other things that it controls as well, uh, or that it does for your system. And the reason why that's strange, if you don't know, if you're not familiar with the system D debate, is because Linux is uh, effectively a lot of GNU software and the Linux kernel itself. They came after Unix, and they kept the things about Unix that they liked and then disposed of the things they didn't like. In Unix, the philosophy was always do one thing and do one thing well. Now, what does this mean? It means if you have a uh, networking daemon running on your machine and an SSH daemon running on your machine, the code for that networking daemon should just be a networking daemon. That's all it should do. The reason for this is because it makes things more modular. If for some reason the, the author of that daemon decides to stop developing the project, you can easily replace it. You replace one thing on your, dev on your device. Uh, it's easier to troubleshoot if you know where the issue is. Uh, Etc. You know, it, it just basically makes things. The fact that it makes things more modular and easier to troubleshoot should be enough. So anyway, System D, like I mentioned earlier, controls these a lot of processes on your system, and people dislike that because it's not following the Unix philosophy. Which means if something goes wrong with System D, the author does something that people don't like. The author decides to make it non-free. Um, you don't just you don't just replace your uh, your init system with like run it or some other alternative you have to replace a lot of things you have to basically find an entirely new operating system one that probably doesn't already you know basically just use one of the other options and then relearn everything so that's kind of the the legitimate reason because there are there are that, that I think it's a good reason to dislike system D but what you'll hear in the system D debate is at least what I've heard, I should say, because there are people who are very passionate about this who are way more educated than I am. But what I hear in the debate is a lot of illegitimate reasons to not use System D, like they don't like the author. Um, I, I completely concede it's your choice and your right to not use software from people you don't like. Um, when it comes to floss, I don't particularly care about the politics or the personality of the person who authored the code. That's not a concern of mine. Uh, with paid software, of course, it's different because you're, you're, you're I mean, <laughs> you're not supporting a movement of any kind, really, depending on, on what the software is. Most likely, you're not supporting a movement of any kind, but you are giving money to someone. So, for example, um, I, I hear it all the time where I live in a kind of liberal area. Um, I see people all the time who rant about the ethics of Steve Jobs while they have iPhones. And to me, it's it doesn't make any sense, but whatever. When it comes to Floss, though, this is much less of an issue because not only can you take over the project and, and fork it and make it into something of your own, but you don't have to show support for anything other than Floss. You, you can just show support for the, uh, the, the philosophy behind Floss. And not really show like I don't think using Emacs is showing support for Richard Stallman uh, anyway sorry a little bit of a recursive rant there uh, what, what was I even saying come on man oh yeah okay so there are legitimate reasons to like system D legitimate reasons to dislike it uh, well one legitimate reason to dislike it which is the breaking of the Unix philosophy but if you're a newbie this is the whole reason I want to make this video I'm gonna call it the truth of system D if you're a newbie you're coming to Linux. The truth is you will likely be using system D all of the, not all, <laughs> uh, most of the things that are targeted to new users use system D. This is Ubuntu, Debian, elementary, um, pop. By the way, can I tell you? Okay. So I'm me. You guys, you guys know me by now. I, I pretty much you know, wake up and then Linux is my life. And then when I go to bed, the you know, first thing I do, last thing I do before I go to bed is, is usually I'm on a Linux machine doing some kind of development. Uh, so I know 
quite a bit about Linux, but I don't I don't plug into the news a lot surrounding Linux unless it's like really big. But the other day, I was helping someone troubleshoot something at, at the university I work at, and uh, I said, "Okay, what distribution are you running?" And he goes, "Pop OS." And he literally said this. Literally, I'm not kidding. This is what he literally said. I'm using literally correctly here. This is what he said. Pop OS. You've probably never heard of it. Can you believe that? I was shocked. I was taken aback. And I was like, yeah, I've, I've heard of it. It's not like a hidden operating system. Like, what are you talking about? Like, did you just, like, did you say it in front of your grandma? And your grandma went, what? And you thought, oh, wow, it's, no one knows Pop OS. That was weird. Anyway, uh, if you're using Pop OS or Ubuntu or Debian or Elementary, you're going to have Systemd on your, on your machine. And so when, when you're a newbie, you will think that system CTL, this is what happened to me and happens to everyone who doesn't uh, look it up initially, you will think system CTL is software on your machine for managing and organizing demons. But system CTL is actually a feature of system D. Uh, and, you know, well, other features of system D. But that's the biggest one because when you look up, like, for example, why isn't, I'm using Debian and for some reason, um, SSH isn't working. You're, okay, well, first you have to install the open SSH server, and then you have to do sudo systemctl enable sshd or ssh, and then you're good to go. Uh, it should always be started on your system whenever you uh, turn it on. Uh, and so you might think, oh, there you go, it's a daemon manager. Or whenever you use sudo, uh, sudo systemctl restart network tag uh, manager, you know, you might think that's, uh, uh, again, a uh, thing that manages daemons on your device. But to people in the know, people who know it's a bootloader, or I'm sorry, know it's an init system, um, they, you know, and they think it's doing too much, you'll, you'll go online and you'll look up the system D debate and you'll hear people say, no, you should be using run it. No, you should be using sys V. You know, you should, you should not be using uh, system D for all of the reasons that, uh, all of the one reason I've just mentioned here, all the, none of the other reasons really matter to me. I've, I've, I've never noticed, as far as new users go, I have never met anyone, anyone, who has changed from System D or a System D default distribution to a non-System D default distribution and noticed any difference whatsoever. For example, before I knew what a, a NIT system was, I installed Parabola OS, not because I, I knew, I didn't even know it was Arch. I just wanted to, Arch based rather. I just wanted to install something that I thought looked cool. And I think their advertisement, their big advertisement is we exclusively use Floss no matter what. Like our, none of our repositories will ever have anything non-free. Um, and they fully follow Unix philosophy, but at the time I didn't know what that was. So I installed Parabola, did not notice any performance issue. And that's typically what new users care about. You know, they care about, I want to turn it on, I want to get it working, I want to customize it, and I want it to work quickly. You know, I want it to work in a way that I find usable, which is fair. And then as you learn more, you explore more, you test more, you do more risky things, let's say, riskier things even. But when you first get started, none of that is going to be a concern. So the truth about System D is that if, if you are the kind of person who you look things up, you Google things, you, you want to read about what you're going to get yourself into before you get started, and you're reading a lot about Linux, you're reading all these forum posts, you're watching all these YouTube videos, what will happen, what does happen sometimes uh, with, with new Linux users is you'll come across an article or a forum post or something about system D and you'll go, Oh, I got to factor this into my decision. You know, I've, I've really got to think about this because I don't want to use a, a trash bootloader. That, that's a knit. Your knit system is PID one. I keep on calling it a bootloader. What, what's that about? Uh, you know, your, your knit system is PID one. That's like the most important thing ever. And the truth about system D is that, well, the, the truth about init systems is that that is not something you should be worried about at all. And this is just my, my personal opinion, but I don't think it's something that new Linux users should be concerned about. When I say new, I mean like, if you aren't familiar with what parts of the operating system are Linux and which parts are GNU software and which parts are neither, um, 
I think being concerned with your init system is a, it's too far. It's, it's way too far ahead of, of where you, you should be focused on. And that's not because like, you know, it's not important necessarily to know what on your system is GNU slash Linux slash anything else. That's not necessarily important, but, um, you'll be interfacing with that stuff way more than the, the init system. Um, even if you are running system D, you know, it's just way more likely that you'll, you'll be running, you'll be working with, um, non init system software. But, uh, I'm getting distracted. Sorry. So that's the, the truth of system D. The decision isn't important and system D is just fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I, I, I still get confused. I still hear people who they talk about system D in such a vitriolic way and they're, they're clearly deeply, deeply affected by uh, the fact that this, this violates Unix philosophy, which again is a legitimate concern. I just don't think it's something to be concerned about at the moment. Um, again, it's all floss. System D is all floss. And if it becomes something else or something does happen, I can't even think of a good example of what would happen, but if something did, um, you, you could just switch over to a, a run it system or a sys V system. You know, you could just switch over to parabola or you could switch over to uh, Slackware or something. But anyway, so that's kind of just what I wanted to get across. I think I, I every time I see a system D debate online, I'm just like, oh no, not again. Like, who is this for? You know, who is this for? Is it for a knit system uh, hackers? Like people who work on a knit systems or, or, or what? Because um, it's definitely not for new Linux users. It's not for hobbyists. It's not for people who are interested in... Uh, well, I should say, I, I find the conversation interesting. I promise I'll wrap up. I won't keep on going. I find the conversation interesting because I find technology interesting, but I don't like the vitriol. I don't like the ferocity with which people fight against and or defend system D, especially because in the end game, overall, um, it's not a very important decision to an end user. In my opinion, again, I'm sure a lot of people disagree with that, but I, I don't think it's a very important decision to an end user. And I'll even say this, because it's such a not important decision, there's no problem with you never using system D. If you decide, yeah, look, it breaks the Unix philosophy. I don't, I don't care about it. I'm only going to use run it. Then fine. Like that's, that's completely, that's okay. It's not that important is my whole point. Uh, but if you are going to use system D or if you're not going to use system D rather, you should be made aware that if you're a newbie, most of the tutorials you find will be targeted towards system D system. So people will say, okay, well, to troubleshoot your network issue, try restarting your network using system CTL. If you're using run it, system CTL will not be on your machine, which means you have to find the, the different way to do that, which is usually something like going to forward slash Etsy, forward slash init.d, forward slash uh, some other, whatever the name of the daemon is, and then restarting it manually. Um, you know, just depending on what system you're running, it, it will change, but Anyway, so that's pretty much it. I've gone on for long enough. Uh, don't be concerned with people who hate on System D. Don't be concerned with people who rave about System D. It's a bootloader. It's an init system, rather. And I don't think it's something that most Linux users should be concerned with or actually are concerned with. I think it's just kind of fun to, to have an opinion on something that's, that's uh, so inflammatory. That's it. Thanks.